All right. New day of October means a new creepy pasta. This time around, it is Jeff the Killer. Honestly, one of the more iconic creepy pastas there are. But keep in mind, everyone. If you're not too familiar with Jeff the Killer and you're a bit squeamish, eh, I'd recommend you to... I would not blame you if you clicked off the video right now. But without... But I don't want to take up too much time, so... Let's get into the stories. Alright, now we're going into the lore behind Jeff the Killer. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I read this one like a couple weeks ago because I was feeling in the mood, so might as well go back to it. <laughs> it's, I keep forgetting about the freaking picture here. Uh, Jeff the Killer Origins and History. A uh, quick overview, the story of Jeff the Killer goes something like this. At 13 years old, Jeff, Jeffrey Allen Woods, or Jeff C. Hodek, depending on upon who you ask, but more on that later, I'm not going to worry about that, uh, moves with his parents and brother Louie to a new town. Here, Jeff and his sibling encounter three bullies and are threatened with knives. Jeff beats these bullies badly, with Louie taking the blame for the assault and being carted off by the ever-reliable police. Guilt-written and depressed at having let Louie take the blame for his actions, Jeff's day gets even worse when he meets the bullies again and is horribly burnt in an attack with alcohol and bleach. This burning results in Jeff being permanently disfigured, his skin bleached white physically, uh, physically whilst his mind snaps. Upon being discharged, uh, discharged for some reason, his doctors apparently attributing Jeff's insane behavior to the painkillers he's taking. Jeff arrives home and proceeds to make a bad situation worse by purposely mutilating his already disfigured face, cutting a permanent smile into his mouth and cheeks, and burning off his eyelids so that he can always see his face. Jeff then goes on to kill both his parents and his brother Louis, meeting him with the instructions go to sleep, before stabbing him and disappearing on a wider and less dis discriminating killing spree, which it would seem continues to this day. According to the creepypasta explanations, Jeff's fixed grin is due to scarring he inflicted upon himself, his eyes stare widely because he burnt off his own eyelids, and his skin is lily white as a result of having been her horribly burnt by bullies with a combination of alcohol and bleach. The photograph that accompanies that uh, the many Jeff the Killer stories and which looks like a cross between Michael Jackson and a demented dolphin. <laughs> I think I accidentally skimmed past this one a couple weeks ago when I was looking at this. <laughs> Oh my god. That's funny. I like that. Oh my god. It's wi widely known not only from the many derivative creepypastas using the character, but die to a die. I think it's due. Uh, due to its widespread use in screamer videos alongside Jeff's famous catchphrase, go to sleep. However, it seems that the details of exactly how Jeff the killer ended up with his hideous appearance, corresponds as they do this Im to do to this image, were retrofitted the rationales being written to match the image rather than the other way around. Oh yeah, the story. So it starts off with some uh, 
I'm not gonna like read the full story because I want to like try to make this a little bit short, but it's, it just seems like this starts off with a young boy saying, he, uh, yeah, so he had a bad dream and he woke up in the middle of the night. He noticed his window was open and went to close it and then crawled back in bed, but he couldn't fall asleep. So because he felt like he was being watched, he looked at where the curtains were and he saw uh, the two eyes that were bordered with black and just that were white eyes bordered with black and then saw the mouth long current the smile that made every hair on his body stand up that's when you know that's Jeff the killer especially when after a little bit he says go to sleep and right here that's where his mistake if he goes if he says go to sleep and you scream that's when he's going to lunge at you. Police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in that story, please contact your local police department. And this right here, this is like the start of the original Jeff the Killer creepypasta story. Like Jeff and his family moved to a new neighborhood because his dad had gotten a promotion at work and thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. After moving, they met uh, their new neighbors, Barbara and her son, Billy. And then they were invited to Billy's party, a uh, birthday party. So there was a little bit of a dis uh, disagreement there between Jeff and his mother, Margaret. After that, the next day, uh, Jeff and Louie ate breakfast, they went to the bus stop and encountered the three bullies, which the leader is named Randy, then you got a skinny sidekick named Keith, and fat one named Troy. And let's, uh, what was it again? They, oh yeah, they took uh, Louie's wallet as a little price for taking the bus. They tried attacking them with knives and then Jeff fought back which ended up a whole different way because the next day officers came by saying that saying that those reported that Jeff and Louie were running away from the scene of, of what happened and then Louie got ended up uh, getting taken away for when you're in juvie because of it and then later on Saturday Jeff is woken up by his mother because they were going to Billy's party that day his mother and father both dressed up fancy but Jeff didn't have any fancy clothes so he ended up picking out a black a pair of black dress pants as the same pair that we all know today and an undershirt but he couldn't find a shirt to go with dress pants so he just opted for the white hoodie which we all know as well no time to change so after a little bit into the party Randy Troy and Keith came up uh, jumped over their the fence with their skateboards ended up fighting Jeff and during the fight Randy kept taunting Jeff to where something inside Jeff snaps his psyche is destroyed all rational thinking is gone all he can do is kill and a pile drives Randy into the ground and started hammering punches straight into Randy's heart Numerous times, punch after punch, blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. As that happened, uh, let's both uh, Jeff starts running up the stairs. Troy and Keith tried to fire their guns at him, but each shot missed. Jeff is able to pull a towel rack off the wall and Troy uh, swings it and hits Troy 
Max Sinter in the head. Troy goes down hard. And later on, uh, has a little bit of trouble with Keith. So when Keith pushed Jeff into the wall, Thingo Bleach fell down on top of them. Uh, down on top of both of them. So it was burning both of them. Jeff was managed to s hit Keith as well into a uh, smack center in the head with the towel rack as well. But while Keith was laying there bleeding to death, he f had a s had an ominous, uh, ominous smile, trying to figure out what's so funny. Keith pulled out a lighter, switched it on, saying that Jeff was covered in both bleach and alcohol because during the f uh, when Jeff was still going up against Randy, uh, where is it? Yeah, Randy ended up throwing Jeff into the kitchen and sm uh, smashed a bottle of vodka over Jeff's head. So you got alcohol there. And freaking <laughs> Jeff turned into a real life version of Burning Man. Alcohol burned him, bleach bleached his skin. He was a walking inferno and ended up walking down the hall and fell down the stairs. Last thing Jeff saw before he passed out was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame on him. Later on, Jeff ended up waking up in the hospital, like had a cast cast wrapped around his face, he couldn't see anything, felt a cast on his shoulder, stitches all over his body. He tried to get up a nurse came in and stopped him from getting up as she reinserted the IV into him. After a few hours, uh, his mother shows up, explaining that all the witnesses at the party explained to the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you, so Louis free, uh, free from juvie. So the two of them would be together for a bit again. And after that, she left. Next couple of weeks was uh, Jeff trying to heal back up again. Eventually, the day came where his bandages would be removed. His family members were all there to see it. Let's hope for the best. And then he ends up taking the last of the bandages off from Jeff's face. And that's where his face first uh, originally came from. The face that we all know today. Well, the beginning of it, that is. Because his lips were burnt a deep shade of red, his face was turned into a pure white color, and his hair singed from brown to black. So his hair was originally brown, and then it was turned black from uh, from the fire burning it with the alcohol and bleach. Actually, no. I think it would just be the alcohol in that case, because the bleach was mostly for the skin. His skin had a bit of a leathery feel now. And that's where it started. Yeah, not that bad, really. Saying the face is perfect for Jeff because when he was fighting Rand, because down here, right here, let's 
saying that uh, when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity snapped. So now, uh, yeah, that was the beginning of Jeff the Killer right there. Obviously, Margaret, uh, Jeff's mom, concerned for Jeff, asks if he's alright. <laughs> Doctor thinking it's because of the painkillers, but nope, not that. Time to go home. Okay, yep. And it started leaving, then it went to the reception desk to get the clothes. This is what came in. And it was the pair of black dress pants and white hoodie that uh, Jeff was killing at the... Uh, <laughs> was the pair... Was what he was wearing at the party originally. Now they were clean of blood and now stitched together. Then they left, not knowing that this was going to be their final day of life. Yep. Yep. And later that night, Margaret woke up to the sound of crying from the bathroom, walked over, and she saw Jeff had taken a knife and carved his smile asking what he was doing and Jeff replied saying couldn't keep smiling it hurt, it hurt after a while now he can smile forever since he carved the smile into his cheeks I think I have a mosquito bite anyway my bad off topic And then all, all of a sudden she noticed his eyes being ringed with black, asking what happened there. And then he replied saying that he couldn't see his face. He was starting to get sleepy, so his eyes started to close. So, in response, he burns his eyelids off so he could see his new face forever. Obviously saying, what? What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son. Let me go get Daddy so he can see her face. Obviously, she ran to the room, shook uh, Jeff's dad awake from sleep. Honey, get the gun. Wait. And stopped as soon as she saw Jeff in the doorway holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. As the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, guiding both of them. His brother Louis woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. He got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth, ready to plunge it into... Louis thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, just go to sleep. Yeah, and that's the Jeff the Killer story I definitely remember. Oh boy. Hey you, yes you, behind the camera. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Hey! This entire month of October 2022, there's going to be one creepypasta video a day throughout the entire month. So, if you don't want to miss the chance of catching the next one being uploaded, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notification. And if you really liked this video, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Put a comment down below, tell me what you thought of it. But other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.